greetings from a lot of churches that does not know you and that you don't know them but with uh, with Madagascar guys we come more than 20 to 25 years about let's say 22 years ago the first guys came from Madagascar to Kriare through a pastor and this pastor, apostolic leader, he planted over 2,000 churches in Madagascar. And then he heard about us and he said, no, he wants to send someone. And the first guy came and then a lot of his children came. And then a lot of other pastors, kids from different places in Madagascar came. And that's how all over the place. Um, yeah, God has done a major thing. And some of our leaders went there for a season, even Conrad... Conrad went there for a whole year, and uh, so now we had the conference right in the north at a small island, Nozi Bay, in Madagascar, but it was very humbling to hear about pastors coming 3,000 kilometers for this four-day conference, and uh, how they traveled more than a whole week just to get there through roads i thought south african roads not good whoa you ain't seen nothing yet <laughs> sure they have this kamakazi knotsi bolikis what you call them this yellow stuff two wheels at the back and one in the front and he's a taxi guy and uh, they have tuk tuk a tuk tuk they call it a tuk tuk in india they have a lot of those stuff they have even races with uh, with these stuff and then sometimes that thing can roll over and I don't know what. But um, no, that is the transport. So looking the road and you just see a lot of yellow of these, these, these guys. And they know how to jobberate through those holes. I'm telling you, better than taxi drivers here. Sure. But next week we're going to talk about um, Madagascar a little bit. No more. I just know... The Kriari, where we went into more than 30 countries every year for a season, about 20, also 20, 22 years ago. And then God just laid it on our hearts that, no, we must, we must consolidate. And then a prophet from America came and he said, God is not calling you out there anymore. He looked at me and he said, God is calling you for the apostolic training of young men around you. And from then, the strategy changed how we got people from different nations to come for a year or two or three. But after about now two decades, I really believe God is bringing a release. Yes, in the past five to seven years, we've sent out a lot of leaders. A lot of core leaders, a lot of good leaders. And while I was trying to feel depressed about that, um, God just tuned me about that was the vision. And that is the vision. And if we raise up people according to the vision to be sent out, who must be sent out? The guys that we don't like or the best guys that are trained with excellence? So the excellent leaders, not that the other leaders here are not excellent. We're talking about the guys that are sent out must be sent out with excellence. Amen. But I know there will be a season that... Uh, we will go more intense. Even Conrad that went there for a year, it was good to hear there. Up, up, up in the north. What happened eight years ago? No longer. How long ago he was there? I don't know. That was before I got... That was about 18 years ago. And how they talked about what God did when Conrad was there. That was, that was amazing. It was very excellent. And the youth, the young people, they... They give themselves full out. One of the five poorest countries in the world. And they just give themselves. They just give themselves full out. Some of those places, township here will look like palaces. When you see what you can't believe how people will, yeah. And how they will just carry on and stand for Christ. Oh, God is an awesome God. Amen. Amen. I just want to leave with you before Pastor Emil is going to bring the word. I just want to give you one, one example that we actually use there on the other side also. I don't know if uh, those who didn't receive a, 
a little sweet in the first service. You can receive one. We hope, uh, hopefully, there's enough for everybody. Niku, is it al net jij wat ideal? Dat gaan, dat gaan naar vat. Okay, don't eat. Tell your neighbor, don't eat. You're gonna keep this sweet for the next 50 years. Your grandchildren will remember. You know, when my grandmother and my grandpa, when they were in a service, they made a certain commitment to the Lord. Uh, okay, and what is the commitment? We're going to get out there now. Okay, you, everybody, you have your sweet. Don't eat it because you, we beat you up in a Christian way if you do that. Good. So... Those who can come with me to 2 Corinthians 1. 2 Corinthians 1. Yeah, now I must focus. Then, from verse 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. And then verse 20. Everybody say 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. You better remember that. For all the promises of God. Everybody say all the promises. All the promises of God. In Him are yes and in Him amen to the glory of God through us. All the promises we're supposed to receive for His glory. But in Him. All the promises you find. Now, my brother, my sister, this one, I can choose to understand in this, this uh, packaging, there's a very, very nice promise that if you take it and you eat it, and then uh, it will be wonderful. Are you with me? But you know, I mustn't treat God and have the type of respect to treat him as just as a packaging for something that I want. That I, in Jesus' name, I go for the promises of God. I stand for the promises of God and what he promised and how he wants to provide. And I treat Jesus just as this packaging that I will open up, but I'm going to throw it there and I'm going to enjoy it. You cannot treat Jesus as the, just a packaging for something. Are you with me? Because he is the one. He is the real deal. So when, when Israel, remember, we spoke about this. When Israel wanted to go to Canaan. And they were so standing on the promises. Just on the street, on the inside. And they were so standing on the promises. God said, I will let them go. Let them inherit the promises. That is yes. But I'm not going with because if you treat God as the packaging, he's not going with you in what you're going, even if you're going into the blessings that he provided. Are you with me? So please, if you've eaten this, um, just say, sorry, Lord, and then uh, come to us. We'll beat you up and give you another sweet. Okay. And then that sweet you keep for 30 years. Don't come next week and say, Pastor, I've eaten the sweet. And they want another one. Yay. Why, how awesome can it be now, if you think, in 30 years' time, if there's a sweet and your grandchild know, that was the day when my grandfather made a promise to God. Now, you make that promise to God, I believe, I hope, in Jesus' name. That you will not run from the promises for the promises of God if God is not going with you. And you will not treat Jesus as a packaging for a sweet. That I use the name of Je in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for the car. Thank you for this. Thank you for that lady. Thank you for the guy. Thank you for for my breakthroughs. Pew. But I pew. are you with me? There's two verses I want to give you. When he says in Christ, in Christ is yes and amen. First of all, I want to say is God looking at you and he says. Yes. For all the promises that he has for your life, there's a yes. 
Let's say God says yes for my life. So you think of your life, then you know heaven is saying yes. In my son, I've given you everything that you need. Everything. And far more above what you can think or pray. It is a yes from heaven. But from you, with a respect, there must be a amen. But the amen is also in Christ. Not first in the blessing. Heaven says yes to you. You, says, you say amen. With humility to say, let it be so. Like Mary said, let it be done unto me according to your word. For Jesus to be born through her life. Now a lot of stuff must be born through the bride of Christ. But that must look like him. And so may we understand what Mary said when she said, let it be done to me according to your word. It was a amen. And I leave you with that one. Last two verses in the Bible. Those who want to go with me quickly. Let us read it just as it is. Verse 20. Revelation 22, 20. He who testifies to these things says, surely. And in the most of other translations saying, yes. The yes is more than just the yes. It is a sure, sure promise. Yes, or surely, I am coming quickly. And the church, amen, even so, come, Lord Jesus. So today, Jesus is saying, yes, I want to come today in your situation. Not just in that day, at the end of the age, when everything is finished and is the wedding of the Lamb. With the church as his bride. Not only then. But today God says yes. I'm coming quickly. God is so ready to come in your situation. In your, in your challenge. In your breakthrough that you need. God is so ready. He says yes. I'm here. And I want to come quickly. If we can respond with respect. To say amen. Even so. Come Lord Jesus. To come and do whatever you want to do. This day, this week, this year of my life. Amen. Can we remember even when you say amen, you say amen for the full package that is in him. But you don't want to treat him ever as just a, a cheap packaging for a thing that you really want. And we will never say we do that. But when I focus more on the, that thing on the inside than the outside then it's like having a suite and you focus on the suite and oh what a wonderful packaging it's not about that hello but your heart will never be like that that's our decision today in jesus name amen